We're getting the same pattern across the world. So this is the S&P here. We're looking from the low here of May the 4th for the ASX, but the 5th here as 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5 of 1, and then an ABC pattern here, and then moving up at that point. So all the way up for wave 1, wave 2. The NASDAQ's the same. I've got it 1 degree smaller like the ASX here um, as 1, 2, 3, 4 and going up for wave five here. So uh, the US markets are a little bit advanced in terms of um, moving into their uh, wave five where the Australian market's still doing its wave four here. So when we look at the, well, let's just go, sorry, let's just go to the bigger picture here first. If this market is going to be bullish uh, here, then we're looking at this as one and two and three and four. And then we're looking at one, two, three, four, five to the upside. Now, when we get these five waves up here in the US market, um, this is actually a turning, this is a possible turning point for US markets that can turn lower at this point. So uh, we need to be very careful here because we could also view this really here as an A and a B <clears throat> and a C wave here as well on the bearish side of things. So not out of the woods yet um, <clears throat> with this. Um, we would need to have a, an ABC pattern here that we could label this as all wave one and wave two over here, but we're not, we're not there. We're just not there yet. So we just got to be careful. We, we're just working these five waves here. And in those five waves, we are looking at it. I'm looking at it as one, two, three, four, five for one and back for two and then up for three, four, five. So we should be bullish. Um, obviously, the next step here is a classic trading levels pattern at 7.3 because we're reacting here. Um, we've arrived, we're reacting, we'll get the first high above the level and then we'll get an ABC correction. So we will be looking at this particular type of pattern just here and then we can move up. So uh, the third wave should be okay, but third waves normally come in around the top here. So we'll have to be, be interesting to see if this is actually shorter here or longer than wave one. I'm going to go to from 5k to 1k uh, 100 ticks here just to drill in on that and um, yeah so I may have changed the degree of structure for this <clears throat> in that I think when we spoke before I may have had wave one over here for this so just to get your bearings we've got one and two here and we're looking up for three, four, and five for wave one, and then the ABC back for wave two here. So I am having a little bit of difficulty. I've I've labeled it with wave three and four here because that's uh, quite clearly where the US markets are. So we've got wave three here and wave four. So it makes it quite good. And I can count one, two, three, four, five. I haven't actually counted this in here, I've looked at this as the A wave, the B wave, and the C wave here uh, for wave two. On the actual cash market, it's quite straightforward as, as just one move to the upside. It's just the futures markets trading in those off hours. Um, so it's good to put wave three and four here to bring it in line. But I have to say that when I'm counting up here, I've got one, two, three, four, five here. So one and two, and then I count another five here. So I'm a, I'm a bit, I feel like I'm short one wave but um, I'll probably just have to squeeze it into here as a three and four into this little section here, but I'll go back over that. Anyway, it's just a little bit of an issue I just wanted to uh, share, but um, otherwise um, uh, a couple of things here. So the, if this is wave two here, and this is the top of wave three, the 38.2% comes in around the uh, 72.44, so 0.8, so 72.45 would be the closest largest number. So 45 and 48 doesn't have to pull that far down, but um, uh, it'd probably take this low out here because this move up here is not really giving me five waves up here. This is possibly uh, countable in five waves down here and three waves here. So we should get five waves over here for this. So we can come down to the, as I mentioned, the uh, 
um, but there will obviously be good support at the 250 here as well within all of that. Not that it reflected it over here, but because it was <clears throat> it was on the move, but over here will be sort of slowing down um, because the S&P needs to pull back for this little wave two here. So why that's drifting lower, and then when it starts in this wave three here, then that's going to lift this off at that point. So that's really where we are. So... The next, I suppose, um, good trade for this really will be like over this wave two over here. So it's going to take a little while to get there. May things take longer than they're expected. So that may be um, we're going into the swing day. So Tuesday it starts to swing a bit. Then um, Wednesday and Thursday give us those swing days. Thursday is the bear day in a bullish weekly cycle. So we might be able to start buying Thursday um, afternoon here or on the US Thursday. At this point, it should start firming up coming down here and then Friday and next Monday and so on. We'll see how the timing event, see how things, uh, how quickly things unfold and where they are within their patterns and so on. And we'll try and see how they line up with our bullish weekly cycle on those particular days. Okay. Um, so <coughs> I want to talk about the banks, but I want to do something a little bit uh, different today. So I want to have a look around. So I was asked about, um, I was asked about, um, about the banks in, uh, I think it was the Bank of Queensland actually. So this is the, the XXJ here. Okay. So, um, just over here, that's the XXJ. So it's, a, it's just the banks um, within this space. Now, it's kind of interesting. Now, CBA and Macquarie's, they're, uh, they've got different things going on, but basically um, <coughs> um, the rest of them, ANZ, WBC, Bank of Queensland, they can kind of all fit into this particular pattern here. Now, it's a little bit difficult to call, you know, it, it, it looks okay for this to be a wave one to the upside, you know what I mean? And, and pulling back for a wave two and then we can go up, but it's hard to get a wave C out of here. And in a triangle, wave C can be three waves. So, it, you know, this is quite pretty clear that this um, is looking like uh, three waves here. I mean, the main point about all of this is that um, this is corrective, all of this pattern here. So I don't see us going into some, you know, catastrophe in terms of, you know, markets, uh, you know, going into a depression and those sorts of things because this is a corrective pattern and we need to make new highs. It's just a bit the same as... Um, this is the Shanghai market here, the comp. So this is, you know, we've looked at this before. This is a corrective pattern in here. It's a triangle. <clears throat> now, uh, I could put the triangle being finished in, in this point here. And there's a, a bit of a good case for for uh, for that. Um, so looking at the, the China A50 here, I've got a nice little five waves up here on the daily chart for the for the A50, the China A50 top one. And we've got this little ABC down here. I'm not really feeling the love with a impulse wave up off the low here. So I'll just keep a bit of an eye on it. <clears throat> it might be that we have an A wave here, some sort of ABC pattern here and then come down and hit this again. So I'm not quite sure about this, but the thing I like about this is that we've got those five waves here. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a, a bit of a positive a thing there. So this also that, that five waves we just looked at will be this little five waves. Um, uh, this little move coming up here also appears to be in five waves as well. So we could be leading into um, into a bullish market with 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 China at this particular point. We're not far off it. I can you know. I mean, it's it's possible for this to get a bit more complicated. I mean, when you think about um, when you think about this particular size here, right? This because this came down, went up, came down. This came down, went up, went. So this is this is a reoccurring pattern, right? A fractal pattern, really, of this larger pattern here. 
So the size of it is is smaller, isn't it? So this next one here, this 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 trend up and this trend up and this move back here, this ABC pattern here can be this ABC pattern here. Do you know what I mean? We're getting five waves up there. We could put that in here. Now it's a little bit sort of hopeful when I go that sort of close to things, but um, you know it's kind of doable. I don't, um, you know, I don't. You know, it's that kind of thing. I don't mean to turn it green or anything, but um, you know, it, it's 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 sort of there, isn't it? You know, so I'm keeping an eye on it because obviously two things could be happening. They're either, you know, uh, the big buyers of commodities and they sell to the West. So they get their commodities from anywhere from Brazil to Africa to Australia and so on. Um, so it's all a you know a supply and uh, demand situation. They've also got their you know their stockpiles that they need to restock and those sort of things. So um, yeah, there's there's lots of variance in the situation. But um, eventually, something we should be taking this top out eventually. I just don't know if we need to put wave four in through to here for that. But anyway, that's a commodity thing, and I wanted to have a look at the bank thing. So. Um, with the bank thing here, there's a good case for having some sort of A wave, B wave, C wave, D wave here. Now, I don't even know if the D wave is finished <clears throat> and then the E wave here. So to have an E wave here, that kind of means that we would need to, you know, drop down a fair way on all of all of that, you know, re sort of uh, uh, realistically, you know, so that's a bit a bit of an issue um, at that point, you know, of this dropping down. Uh, that means that the uh, the US markets would need to drop down as well. And, you know, we've got bearish patterns for the US market. So this is the, the bearish pattern for the US market. So <clears throat> we've got this, all of this move coming down for wave A here. And then we can look at this as an A and a B as an ABC pattern here for the B wave. And then looking for five waves up here um, as three, four, and then the little wave one that we're looking at now, and two and three and four and five, and finishing at the 61.8% at four, three, and then coming down for wave C here. So I don't know if this is true or not, but if we're talking about corrective patterns, where would the next weak spot be? Where Where's the danger? Well, it would be after these little five waves here. Will this happen? I don't know. I mean, we just got to see how this plays out. We may just get an ABC here and we'll go up again. You know, but this is the weak spot here. So, but what I'm saying, if we do come down, we'll be coming. We've got to take this low out here. So we're going to be cl quite close to the three thousand here. In that case, you know, anywhere in this particular space. So if we're going to come down here, then the U.S. banks are definitely coming down. If the if the U.S. banks are coming down, well, then the Australian banks are going to definitely be coming down, and you know, we'll see some type of situation like this before completing this E wave over here. Now it's difficult to, you know, we can count this here as one, two, three, four, five and have a little ABC here and push up from here. That's all, all possible, but it's kind of a little bit flimsy as well because we've got overlap on wave one and, and, and uh, four here. <clears throat> uh, it, pretty impulsive at this particular point in time. Um, you know, so, you know, uh, it's, it's, um, you know, if it was take, if it was above the 72, because obviously that's pretty important at this point. So if it was above that, then I'd be sort of more looking on the bullish side at this point, but <coughs> we're under that and it's sort of rejected a little bit. If we get another low here over this one here, then it's really going to put it in a bit of a bearish mode. Um, so, like in in you know this how long is this going to take to have five waves up here? Well, not that long really. That was on the fifth of March, and it's the eighth or ninth today. So a few days here, a few days here, a few days in this one, a few days here. So you know, um, <clears throat> within you know the comments I make about you know sell in May and go away or whatever, then you know that could play out quite comfortably here within the early parts or you know mid this month so to speak you know so but anyway this particular pattern here in a way 
um, is obviously a bit of a moving average of, of the other banks. Now, uh, CBA is a little bit different and, um, and Macquarie's are a little bit different. I'm just going to just go down here and find my banks wherever they are. So, um, WBC on the weekly, it's kind of got the same pattern, isn't it? We could go an A, B, C, a D here and an E over here for this. I mean, it'd be kind of there. The A and Z pattern here as an A, B, C, D and E here coming down, you know, in line with the S&P and the, and the US banks. You know, the other question we have to ask ourselves, you know, will commodities come down with it, you know? And there's a good chance for that. Um, I can't prove it just yet, but uh, I can't prove a bullish count for the commodities just yet either. I mean, obviously, there's individual markets doing their individual things, you know. Um, and then we go into, uh, I don't know what Bendigo's like, but it's kind of got the same sort of pattern, really, isn't it? You know, probably an even a little bit clearer, really, um, in that regard. And the NAB, uh, we're on a weekly chart here, so this would be the the NAB as well. Um, it's just difficult to get a C wave down here of one, two, three, four, five here. There's quite a lot of overlap, you know, so it makes, you know, we, it looks like an impulse wave up here and it very well could be. We could have a WXY here for the correction. Do you know what I mean? That is possible. Um, but in, in this case, it counts quite nicely up as five ways, but it's not, not the, <coughs> it's not the case in all cases, you know. So, um, you know, if we took the tops out, by all means, we could look to be bullish at that point, but we're, just, we're not there yet. You know, we've topped and we're wondering what the hell this is. You know, is it a corrective move coming back or is it going to come deeper into, into this situation here? We know what, what, what are we up against? And the same with BAQ as well. It's slightly different, you know. But if the others are going to come down, then this can make a deeper move down here for sure. It would probably come down and touch this trend line here, you know. <clears throat> um, you know, something like that. I mean, it's not that far off of being sort of a channely sort of situation, but uh, yeah. So um, yeah, this looks pretty impulsive coming down here. I mean, obviously, the five dollar mark here is going to be a bit of a doorstop five being the second strongest number it's played out here before <clears throat> so it could probably come down a bit more than one would think you know so maybe to the four dollar market you know because the, the, when you think about it you know these really haven't come down at all i mean <clears throat> They come back to their, you know, as, as an E wave here. When you're in triangles, the 50 and the 61.8% are not always that crash hot to, to work with. Um, they can they can work, but I've seen them, you know, <clears throat> I've seen with triangle patterns, you know, pulling back to 80, 90%. So you've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, I couldn't see it stopping just here. I've got this on log scale, by the way. So I think, yeah, it's a big deal, but. <clears throat> so yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about the 50, 60% at this, at this point with these. Anyway, I just thought I would uh, have a look at the banks and um, look at the bigger picture with with uh, uh, with, with these and um, <clears throat> yeah, the XXJ here. So uh, as a triangular pattern here, this is probably uh, it's a reasonable possibility. Put it that way, you know, looking at these structures, you know, because they're all they're all three waves at this particular point. I mean, you could probably get five waves out of out of this lot here and look at this as a WXY um, as some sort of running 
running flat correction. Um, but I wouldn't hold my breath about that unless we can see a move above the tops here, you know, and we're not really, we're not on an intraday basis. We're not really seeing that at the moment. And if the only positive thing, and this is the same with CBA here as one, two, three, four, five, but CBA also overlaps as well. So, yeah, I mean, if, if we're expecting the banks to push up a little bit at the moment, the US bank, so we can, they'll be firm for, you know, they'll, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be, the banks will be firm for while this is pushing up here. It's while the S and P is pushing up and the Australian market's pushing up here for the next, what's this is like two days here, say two, two, four, six, eight, ten days, ten trading days takes to the, you know, the middle of the month, so to speak. Um, once that's done, we can watch, we can get some idea of where this is going to be in tech. Cause if this is not up here in 10 days, right, then, um, you know, we've got a problem at that point. You know, if it's just going to fluff around here, you know, and not really move, it can pop up and drop and do these sort of things. And, you know, but any move below this low here, uh, and certainly, well, I mean, technically it can come all the way back to this low here. So I can't say much about that. But um, over the next 10 days, if it's not taking this top out here, then there's, there's definitely a, a problem and it would open up this can of worms uh, here for this, in this type of thing here. <clears throat> uh, okay, well, that's that. And uh, I want to have a look at uh, copper. So with copper, that it's holding up quite well. We've been looking at one and two and three and four over here. And I can allow it to have a one more little low to play in here. Um, but in the meantime, I mean, copper's a little bit different from the other guys because, you know, um, nickel and lithium are in, you know, uh, well, nickel's in lots of things. Lithium is in sort of less things, but copper's in just about everything, you know. So um, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a, people use it for, uh, you know, judging inflation and that's, that's why it's the doctor, isn't it? You know, they call it the doctor copper. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so this wave four plays a pretty good part in here. And when we have a look at um, the, some stocks here, if we look at this POMI, POMI stock uh, here, probably not a good example, this one here, the POMI one. My mum's a POM, so I can say POM. So, <clears throat> and I've lived there long enough myself, so... Um, so uh, here we can look at this really, uh, you know, I'm not saying this is correct, but we could look at this as, you know, uh, wave one with an A and a B and a C wave for wave two, and then having a look at all of this as five waves up here. And then we got five waves down here on this. So the A wave, the B wave and the C wave to here as wave four and then wave five here. So this is looking quite good at this particular point. Um, it's not to say that this is true because we need to be pushing up here further. We need to essentially take this top out here. But as an ABC, it's kind of okay. And the FCX here is also got the same pattern coming down here as the A, the B and the C. But we don't really want to see them come down any further. Otherwise, we'll be overlapping wave one in this case. So these were two stocks, a US stock and an and a English stock here for, for, the, for those. Um, and then it does bring in BHP here as well, because obviously you've got um, copper in there. So is BHP going to be here or is, is BHP influenced more by iron ore as a straight play, you know? So anyway, copper's holding up quite well. Um, uh, this is CBA uh, here, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, this is looking pretty <coughs> pretty bearish. It'll be nice to see where it is in 10 days when the S&P tops out. Then that will be a, a warning sign. So we've, we, we've got a plan now, not a plan, but we've scoped out the bigger picture. We've kind of got the timing worked out for the next 10 days of mid-May, and we'll just see where the banks are. And if they haven't got off their fat, lazy asses and done something here, then we'll be on the short, we'll be looking to short them. So <clears throat> this is the US um, metals and mining here. It's, it's probably not fair because it's got a couple of gold stocks in here as well. But the thing that I see here is that um, we've got an impulse wave here. We've got a corrective wave here. 
So it can be viewed as an A and a B and a C wave up here. Now I could go and look at it as wave one here and two here and one here and an A and a B and a C for wave two. The wave C here would be wave one here, two here, three here, four here and one more low here and then pushing up from that point. So I could put that there as wave C here. But what it will do, we'll keep an eye on this because if it takes out that low here, at that point, you know, go after these five waves here, it will have some sort of ABC pattern testing it again here, and then it can drop at that point. <clears throat> so this this can be quite helpful for us for the general mining side of things. This is the US here. They've got steel in them and Peabody and all those, and they've got Newmont, and you know, so it's a bit of a mixed bag. But um, it's at a point here that's interesting that will really decide uh, where we're at with this. And this current move down here, this is what we've been experiencing with, you know, the BHPs of the world and so on. Oh, this is the copper fund here. So we don't know if, I've, you know, uh, it, it kind of looks okay for the way forward to be sitting there. We'll, we'll see about that. But um, that's not what I wanted to look at. So... The move down here, you know, we could look at it as a wave four like we have done with the copper. That's sort of okay, but I don't know where to put that wave four in because it's really overlapping wave one here now, you know. <clears throat> so we'll just give this a little bit of time as well. But like I've always said, the possibility of it coming down here is really on the cards. And will it come down with the banks or will it do the opposite of the banks? I think that it will come down with the banks. I think it will be a situation where... Um, Another bank in the US, you know, um, is failing um, or, or a series of them or something like that. You know, they've all extended themselves, you know, they, they all lock, you know, it's a bit like our, our builders over here in, in Australia, you know, they all took all the, all the sales for the buildings, <clears throat> you know, on contract at certain prices. And then because of inflation, they couldn't, you know, because of interest rates, inflation and, you know, are probably about half a dozen other things um, that are all locked into there. They expose themselves and that's what the banks have done in the US. And I just think that, um, <clears throat> I think there's, you know, if there's, if there's a few, you know, <laughs> it's like if there's just one or two, you know, like credit um, UBS or something, you know what I mean? It's or credit Swiss rather. Um, then, um, you know, if there's just sort of one and it's sort of isolated, that's sort of one thing. But when you start seeing, you know, three or four fish uh, in the pond, you know, there's going to be, you know, there's got obviously got to be more. <laughs> so um, I think it's going to be something like that, that that triggers it, you know. And it's like, you know, is is JP Morgan going <clears> to <throat> going to save them again? You know, you know, I doubt it. I mean, as they say, you know, JP Morgan in the day was, you know, that they, they were the bank. They basically owned everything, you know, and that's ha happening again, you know, his legacy lives. Um, so I'm not really sure about, um, what we need to do with these, these stocks here at the moment with this. This is, um, iron ore here. <clears throat> so, uh, it doesn't matter if it's, um, Singapore or China at the moment, but we've got this A, B, and C down here. Now, uh, as you know, we could also put this wave C here as wave three here. So this is something that we'll have to work through <clears throat> a little bit later. So I was looking at this being uh, this little wave one here, which I'm happy with. Um, so we can take that down to here. The 38.2% comes in quite close to the previous wave four, because this will be affecting, you know, Rio and uh, FMG and um, you know, all the other iron ore, smaller companies and so on. So we can get up to here. I don't have five waves up here, but we have three waves up here so far, don't we? And it looks like we'll push up a little bit further in there and all that sort of stuff. But um, look, if we get five waves, well, that will become interesting. If this becomes wave one and two, and then we get three, four and five here, and then we get an ABC here, well, then Obviously, I've done something wrong and we'll go along at that point. But if we just get the three here and then we come down here and we get that move down here, that will give us, uh, it will look like a buying opportunity in the stocks because as this moves up here, we're going to move, we'll either have it as wave three or we'll have it as C 
Um, so we just have to work through this and I'll have to wait for it to mature rather than doing anything. I mean, you could certainly buy at, at this low here, you know, and, and take a journey to the upside if you've got the intestinal fortitude and, and you're okay and you're not overextending yourself and all the rest of it. Um, that will be fine. But uh, when this lands here, we have to work out, is this move up here, is it just going to be wave four at that point? And then we go down for wave five. You know, because all of this here, <laughs> if that's wave four and this is wave five here, uh, if that is the case, then it's probably all of this is going to be wave one down here. We go back for wave two and then we go down again at that point. Don't forget this is, if we look at this on the weekly chart here, This would be the, this is what we we're looking at, weren't, weren't we, you know? <clears throat> this length here being the same length as the wave A here with an A, B, C for the B wave, and then one, two, three, four, five. So obviously, <coughs> you know, we'd want to be shorting it on this wave two over here. So this is where we can short, you know, Rio and Vale and all the rest of them into this particular position here. But if this is going to come down, this would be this will be won't be far off the timing of um, of the banks doing the same thing. So I think that'll all happen, you know, at the same time, you know. Anyway, interesting, isn't it? You know. So <clears throat> at least we're preparing for it. You know, if it if it may not happen, it will be bullish. But it's just good to be not. You know, I don't want to be moving without any evidence on, on things. So so with Rio here, um, yeah, look, it could be wave one up there and wave two, uh, two here. But uh, as I mentioned, iron ore is not quite finished just yet. So we're going to see this push up here and we're going to see it drop. And, you know, we're going to see it do all sorts of things uh, in here for a little bit, you know. So we don't really want to get into that chop here at the moment. Um, if something, you know something very positive comes out, then we'll take a look at it, you know, but um, I'm not, not that convinced just yet with this. I mean, the only thing it's got going for it is it's got three waves here in this move here. But I know that in BHP, this is actually five waves here, a little one, two, three, four, five here. So I kind of want to go with that a little bit. So um, yeah, it's one and two and one and two. And then going into the next, you know, one and two. So we could be down, you know, way down here eventually with all of this. That's the thing. We'll see. We shall see. So we don't have a strong enough impulse wave to go just yet. It will go up. You can buy it. You know, it will go up, but I just don't know how much legs it's got. Um, FMG is holding really quite strong. Um, so we expected it to bounce around off this here. We don't have five waves to the to the upside, so we're not going to uh, get involved in this. We need we need iron ore on our side. You know, we need the we need the driver really on our side for to do anything in the area. So US spot goals got me by the short and curlies a little bit, but um, whichever way you want to look at it, we've got a corrective pattern across the 2000 and eventually we'll make uh, new highs on all of this. But in the meantime, I don't know if we, you know, go, uh, go up from here or we need to be looking at, you know, coming back for wave C of two at this particular point in time. I, you know, it's a bit weird really because, um, you know, the stocks haven't got, the stocks, as far as I can see, the stocks haven't got to wave one yet. You know, I mean, maybe I'm, missing something i've got to put wave one up here you know but when i look at um you know when we look at um nst for example we've got one two three four here and then we've got one two three four five so we're not really at, at, at we're not really here at wave one yet you know we're not there yet you know So, you know, if we're going to be up here at wave one, you know, I don't, I mean, it's a different wave one, but <clears throat> shouldn't we have wave one up here somewhere, do you know, a bit higher up? 
Anyway, it's quite messy here. It's okay to own gold stocks, as I said, but not to have leverage in this at the moment until we get to really get it sorted out here. You know what I mean? Because what's going to create this correction here? You know, probably a stronger US dollar, you know, and we're going to see that in US spot gold. I mean, the only other thing I can think of here is, you know, one and two and one and two and one and two and keep building to the upside. But the ones and twos don't always pan out. They're kind of a bit of a long shot, unless it's in a you know substantial sort of little area like this here, one and two, one and two, one and two. You can kind of get it. You know, it's not such a big deal. This is more common, but in a bigger picture here, this is not so common. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, anyway, with Northern Star here, there's two things that can occur here. Um, as I mentioned before, is we can look at this as the A wave, a B wave and a C wave to come back down. It's already at the 38 point. So it's not going to come, you know, that 13 here. It's just going to come down and probably get closer to that. Or it's just going to, you know, push up from this point, you know. It's a bit tricky to read this with so many gaps in the mark in 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 this you know it does look like if if i had to take a guess it looks like wave one and two and three and four and five here with an abc pattern here and then moving up from that point that's what it looks like to me a bit and the abc may even be in there already so um coming back and then and then moving up here for three four and five that's what i'd kind of be thinking um <clears throat> But look, it's just in the guessing game, isn't it? All you can do is just really buy new highs if you wanted to do that, you know. But um, yeah, anyway, it's that's it is what it is. And um, FM, uh, sorry, Newcrest here. <clears throat> We're also looking to take out this top here. It doesn't have to be huge. You can see how wave one was quite small. So all we need to do is take out that top. So probably not get lost in me drawing too too high up here for all of this i should be sort of be on the more conservative side and look down rather than up here so just clear that out here yeah and just bring that down a little bit further so yeah somewhere somewhere up here for for this you know so if this is going to be wave one you know what's going to make it be wave two well u.s spot gold and the and the u.s dollar and those sort of things you know so the u.s dollar still got a little bit more to the downside uh here so we're looking at the u.s dollar here just by the by we're looking at it going one and two and then all the way down here for three and four and this is going back to September the 28th. The low on the low 28th of September was the low on on gold, right? And now we're we're looking for the top of gold, and we know that we're close, but we don't have the low in here for for the for the US dollar yet. So from this way for here, we're going down as one and two, and I've got this down as three and four here. And then I've got the, and it could be a bit, there's a bit of an issue in here, but I've just done my best with it. Uh, wave four, then wave one and two, and then one and two coming back up here, and then three, four, five for third, four. So I think that the time this finishes down here, that's when Newcrest mining will top out. This is when the US dollar will bottom out. It's when the Euro dollar will top out. It's when the sterling will top out. It's when the DAX will top out all of the above and more. And then when this ABC pattern is going on back up here, then we're going to see this ABC pattern going back in here. So this would really leave gold in the same sort of boat. So maybe, you know, maybe I need to put wave four here and wave five up here for, for this here and bring, you know, this wave five over here and bring a wave four in over here and that sort of thing, I, you know, I'm not quite sure what, you know, bringing in a wave four over here. I'm not sure how the penny's going to go here, but it doesn't have to be perfect timing. But the trouble is, is that it has been perfect timing, you know, from, you know, right from the low here. I mean, right back over uh, on the other one, actually, the 28th of September was the low. So, but yeah, so yeah, but no, but so anyway, um, <clears throat> if, you know, if this is, I, I'm just get, guessing in here, I wouldn't sort of do anything in here, but I would imagine that 
<clears throat> we need to push up here and then we'll have have an ABC pattern. If I'm if I'm gluing everything together, this is what it would be, this is what it should be looking like to me, you know. So I'm a little bit unsure about all of this in here. You know, I've done my best with it, but um, I don't think it's good enough to, certainly not good enough to trade off. So we can't do anything at the moment with this. So I'll leave uh, US spot gold and the gold market, and this is Newcrest. So we still need to make another little high here, and then we'll go into that, and that will line up with the dollar and everything. So I'm kind of okay about the patterns working, pushing you know all the markets are like a big bowl of jelly you give it a knock and it all they all sort of wobble together in a way so um the australian dollar here um yeah look i've as i mentioned yesterday while the us dollar is making its way lower we should be making our way to the 61.8 percent over here for this so i could probably rejig this here like put wave one down here and two over here then have one and two here and extend it out a little bit further and i think that needs to go up here and all of those sort of things but in the meantime um it will pull back it will you know at 68 it will pull back there will be some fluffing around here to do so just be a little bit patience uh with uh probably won't do that first up will probably be something oh well, not too much it's kind of pulled back already so it'll be something like this here might even have another little move to the upside on that <clears throat> but we're not interested in in trading this yet the trade for this will come at this point when the us dollar um is that it's wave two pullback um with everything you know so when the us dollar takes its low here and has this abc pattern here we can be short down here for this you know I mean, Stan Druckenmiller <clears throat> uh, <laughs> he's quite a casual sort of person. He's, he's short the US dollar. I think he was saying that $13 trillion came into it in this trend over here. Obviously, that's everybody's leaving the party at the moment, um, going into treasuries and Apple and those sort of things. Um, yeah so anyway that's the australian dollar so um i'll leave that at that and um okay over to the over to um to the metals we had a look at copper and iron ore so this is um pilbara here <coughs> and um yeah so we've just been sort of tracking it to the upside and uh looking at it as wave one and two and five ways up for one and two and one and two and one and two it's good you know i mean the trading levels are really sort of handy in these sort of instances here isn't it because it gives you a little bit of a floor to work with doesn't it do you know what i mean you're just not in open space and in, in the guessing game you've got something to to put your feet on firmly you know like buying new highs above a strong number um so yeah so that's good anyway um it it's panning out quite nicely we can look at this as a little one and two this is probably one and two in here and three and four so i'm thinking this is some sort of wave four now it may drop down further but there'll be wave three four coming back finding that support and then pushing up here and this wave three may even get be sucked up to the five you know how markets love numbers um you could probably bring this to break even at this point we'll just do that so we've got this one and that one there it's all that's uh, a free trade now well okay so um okay we should just fill in a few more little dots here let's just grab this that will be wave three four and five up here that will make this wave three 
and we don't need these anymore. So this all the all these wave fours can roll back to the same place here. That's our first wave four. So this is the beginning of the trend here. This is right in the middle of the trend. And now this will be the end of the trend in a way because we're going into fours and fives now. Fours and fives, fours and fives, fours and fives. So there's a beginning, the building, the middle and the end. Um, but the end will take us up here further. And then we've also got, if we're correct here, if this is wave one and two, um, got anything down here, we'll just borrow one of, oh, we'll just get a fresh one up here. This will be wave three up here. <clears throat> so <clears throat> anyway, that's how that's going. Um, should you be adding to this? Well, you, this would probably be the last place you want to do it is here. Um, you could do that. We could do that. Let's just go back and have a look at the bigger picture here. I mean, far as this last trend goes here, we are at the 61.8% here. If this is where it could fail, this is where it would fail from. But the thing is, is that um, I can just see that we're just not finished in this trend, you know. We could add here. Um, but make it a share trade and not a CFD trade because a CFD you'll be paying overnight financing and they'll be compounding at higher interest every day. And uh, we don't know how long these wave fours are going to play out here, let alone this other wave four here, this wave three here and wave four here. So because what you see is not what you get here. Um, just bring them up there. <clears throat> So that's looking all quite good at this point for that. Don't need these. Um, so the other number up here after five is eight and uh, it's got group two. So you can work all of that and then there'll be group one above and group two below. So we'll work a classic trading levels pattern off here. We'll be able to go higher. We'll want to have a look at this in the bigger picture. So we want to have a look at this. Um, Let's go over here and um, so lithium stock. So let's just let's go the other way today. Let's have a look at lithium here. So what we've been looking at here with this is that um, what have I done here? Oh, that looks okay, I guess. I mean, if we look at this as one, two, three, four, five for here, then we'd have to look at this as well, this is like a wave three here, isn't it really? Um, but if we look at it as wave one for a moment and two and one, two, probably all the third wave here, fourth and fifth, that's not quite true though, is it Pete? You're just making assumptions, one, two. Oh, I still have to figure that out. I really need to treat it as a third wave, third, fourth. That could be a top coming in at this point. That's the other side of it, which I've got there anyway. So we can come up here and have a top. I mean, I've, I haven't counted it correctly, but both ways it will count, it would come out with this here. So what we could do here is view this as, as um, wave five taking this top out how far it goes, we'll need to take that top out there. So we can look at it going to there. That's five, well, we'll go to 565 because that will be a bit of a group two at that point. So we could probably go to 650, the next medium level, anywhere between six and 650, I reckon. We'll, we'll get a grip on it anyway, but that's, um, that's, that's where we're heading to. Now it's going to be tough going through five and up here further. What you see is not what you get next. So just bear that in mind. Um, but this topping out up here will be a, uh, a pretty serious top. You know, we can look at it, you know, five <clears throat> second strongest number, very important. So the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, then an ABC pattern here, 
and then we can go up again at that point. But we don't know how big this is going to be over here yet. <coughs> so, <coughs> so don't marry. <coughs> Just keep it as an affair and uh, have fun. Alrighty. Um, how's Lion Town going? Okay, yes. <laughs> It'll get sold off at three. So that's popped up there. So it's good. Uh, we don't need that now. But we do need to look at... Um, this little this will be one two three four five i don't know if we can bring that into it just yet but what we should expect even if you can't get the count <clears throat> even if you can't get the count right we should be expecting something like this right <clears throat> and this will push up in in line with um pls as well for this okay so i'm going to leave that at that i just want to have a look at nickel that's a bit flat still Just have a look at it, five minute chart. I'll probably have to have a look at it on some other things. It's not like we're getting a nice five waves down here. I could go, what's well, one, two, three, four, five to here, isn't it? I want to see how it goes up against this particular trend here. I mean, we're in wave four, so anything can, out of the dozen different corrections, anything is possible, but we're not seeing, we're not seeing any buying signals just yet for this. Alrighty, I'll leave it all at that. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers. Cheers.